morning everybody um, I felt very compelled to make this video today because I watched a uh, I, well I read an article it was actually an article I read before I think it was re-edited though recently uh, a certain rabbi who I know he wants to remain anonymous he writes on Facebook the <laughs>
let's say Vasil of Sakin, it doesn't matter historically who it was. Why did he wait until he was 80 years old to make Aliyah? Right? <laughs> That's the type of question she asks. To, to Reverend Victor Miller, she, I don't she know who she's talking to, you know? Anyway, so Rabbi Miller, he said, he did not make Aliyah. That's not what he did. He went to Eretz and settled there because the, at the time the Torah in Eretz was stronger. If the Torah would have been stronger in Babel than in Eretz as was other times in history, he would have either remained in Babel or maybe even left Eretz to go to Babel. Because the whole point is to be immersed in a Torah community and it's not a value particularly of quote-unquote making Aliyah. It's a strong statement. It's a statement you would expect from Victor Miller, for sure. Um, and, it, and it should color our Hashkofa. Particularly if you're a fan of Victor Miller, like I am. Not everybody is. And I can understand how some people might might not. Although really, I think everybody should understand him to be a big sadic, you know. I, I, I never remember people saying negative things about him until quite recently. And I imagine that a lot of it has to do with the fact that they never met him in person. And so they don't know who he really was. Even those of us who did meet him in person don't really know who he was. He was such a tremendous sadic and a kalkochem. And, uh, and a genius, and Ashkofa, and, and uh, all kinds of things, and a, a true god And people who knew him, even if they disagreed with him, loved him. Uh, even at Hayom, you know, I mean, you know, I can think of one particular Rav, whose Ashkofas are radically different in many ways than Rabbi Miller's. In many areas. In many, many, many areas. And this particular Rav is a Sephardi. Rabbi, Rabbi Miller loved the Sephardi. He's very well known. He has a special, special love for the Sephardi. As it should be, they deserve it. Um, this, this particular Rav is a Sephardi, and he starts his lectures with Bruchim Aboy. Bruchim Abayim. Sephardi, you know how we pronounce it, but uh, and he's welcome everyone. And why did and he, at one time he said, and I noticed that he said that at one time he actually <coughs> explained himself. He said, Why does he say that? Those who, if you ever listen to a tape of uh, of, of Rav Miller, it's a Yagan he always would start the tapes, Brochem Aboy, welcome everyone, we're about to begin. And then he would give a number uh, of the lecture, and then each lecture would have a number. Which also is a very deep lesson or something like that, you know. It's not like how me, I just start talking and I don't think ahead. You could see that Rabbi Miller not only thought ahead, that he had a number for each tape and so forth. And he counted it, and he, but also when he was speaking, you would see it. You, if you listen to the tapes, there's often long, thoughtful pauses where he's thinking about what is he going to say next. Not, not, not only what he's going to say, but how he's going to say it. I remember hearing a... Uh, I remember a, a meeting of Balabas in Manhattan. Also a, a Syrian Sephardi. And he spoke about how the Der Halimud different how he, I'm not sure if he was learning in Chaim Berlin or in Mir, I think it was Chaim Berlin, meaning when he was younger he went to Mag and David, and then when he was a little older his parents sent him, let's say, sent him to Chaim Berlin, and uh, he didn't quite understand the difference in the culture between Mag and David and Chaim Berlin, but more than that was that um, back in David, in the traditional Sephardic approach, the boys were taught Kumish and Rashi by heart. And so he came into Chaim Berlin knowing Kumish and Rashi by heart. And so when he had the Kumish year, he got very bored. Someone told me today.
he got bored in the Chumash year because he knew it all already. So he would fall asleep, or he would maybe read a comic book or something, I don't know. So then the, the Malamed there, the Chumash year, uh, chastised him for... Thank you. 
Israel. He did not make Aliyah. He went to Israel <coughs> for the express purpose of learning Torah and being in a Torah environment. And that's also the reason why, for the most part, the Haredi communities today seek to live in Eretz Israel. situation uh, that everyone has to examine on their own 